Hi, this is Dr. Verma. I know you can't see me here at Lifestyle Physicians. Um, and today is Dr. Um, Cope's first day in Lifestyle Physicians. Uh, we are so excited to have her here. I, and we are going to talk about one of the most common problems um, with women of um, premenopausal age, and that's uh, PMS. Last time we had talked about um, PCOS. And we'll, we'll be doing this every week and we'll repeat these topics uh, because I know <clears throat> everyone can't see it at the same time. So I'm going to point the camera towards her and we're going to start discussions about PCOS. You can ask questions right now or whenever you want and then we'll go from there. Mm -hmm. So um, anyways, welcome to Lifestyle Physicians. Mm -hmm. uh, that makes it three of us here. And next month, my wife is joining Dr. Nagar as a sleep specialist. So there'll be four of us. Um, so uh, you've been doing fertility and PMS and PCOS specialist, right? Yes. So can you, uh, I mean, everyone knows what it is, but mm -hmm. what are the signs, symptoms, and what, when is it you need medical help? Yeah, yeah. So premenstrual syndrome, every woman experiences minor cramps or a little bit of fatigue right before their period and when you start to look for when you might need help is if you're laying in bed with serious cramps and it's interfering with your day-to-day -day life or if you're not able to you know say go with your family because you have cramps and you're just so tired that you're in bed or if you're not able to perform well at work that's when you want to look for some help for PMS. And um, how common do you think this is? Almost all of us have experienced it that have a uterus. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so you know, this is really sad. Um, mm -hmm. I had just attended a lecture um, in um, the, the, you know, it's called the, sorry, I'm just going to point it here. It's the Institute of uh, Wellness, uh, Intimate Wellness. And it was telling us how many medications there are for um, men uh, for um, sexual dysfunction and things like that. And women only have two. And if you go to a physician to talk about um, PMS, um, I think all you're given is a pain medication, pain medication or sleep or well, or take ibuprofen, or yeah. take Tylenol, or all, it's, you've got to deal with it. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that is um, absolutely true. Um, that's what the conventional treatment and things like that, or you know what? <laughs> Stop it, <laughs> birth yeah. control pills. Yeah. That is something that nature intended to happen every month. You, you should not stop that. Um, so uh, what is your approach to someone with severe PMS? Mm -hmm. So if depending on if somebody's on birth control or not, because with birth control, with hormonal contraception, you can still be experiencing PMS. But we just take a look at lifestyle, so such as sleep and exercise and nutrition. And then we supplement that in with any types of herbs or nutrients in order to bring the major imbalance back into balance. But really, most people can solve PMS with just some simple lifestyle shifts, which is pretty profound that doctors don't give these options to us. I remember the first time that I went to a gynecologist and said, hey, my mood's been really off and I've been really stressed at school. and." these are the changes I've made. And he and I was like, you know, I, I think that there's something wrong. And he was like, well, yeah, all women are crazy before their period. And that was what I was told. And I was just like, no, this is something's changed, something shifted. And it was stress for me that caused it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and when, when do you, like, what sort of herbs and things, like, do you use? Yeah. I mean, is there any tips for home, uh, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah, and depending on... If, uh, some people need some herbs for their liver and so such as milk thistle, which is really amazing You do want to be careful if you're taking milk thistle if you're on any type of medications because your medications are usually Metabolized through your liver also and you want to keep your medications in your system Vitex is the number one herb and I have seen that over and over and over again Help people get pregnant and help people just stop their PMS within one month so, okay. yeah, Vitex is amazing. Good. So, and you were saying about lifestyle. So, can mm -hmm. you just give some uh, more, mm -hmm. like, what should they do before it comes on, during yeah. the time it comes on, 
when i mean some people have so much pain that, that they do take pain meds so what should you do then yeah yeah so if you're in too much pain and you need to get through your day there's no problem with having to have an ibuprofen or an aspirin or tylenol that does interfere with your fertility and so if you're trying to conceive you may want to look at other options to manage your pain but if you're looking for something throughout the month we all have our cravings like we all want like chocolate cake or some people want the salty some people want the sweets and we do need more carbohydrates generally before we cycle and so we want to shift those cravings and try to do something like eat sweet potatoes or beets for that type of nourishment which also helps build your blood from a chinese medicine perspective and so just watch your cravings throughout the month because the more sugar and simple carbohydrates that you eat, the more inflammation that comes in your system that causes more pain. And exercise is great. It's actually an amazing relief of cramps. And so you may not feel like going out on a, a 3K or whatever, but just going on a walk is actually shown to relieve cramps quite a bit. And then a nice heating pad if you're stuck up in bed because that actually helps draw the clots out quicker and that's what causes a lot of the cramps when you're going through pms is the blood clots that are trying to move out through your uterus yeah that's mm -hmm. actually that's one of the first questions i should have asked you mm -hmm. is like why do some women suffer from such severe pms that they can't get out of the house yeah. and why do some don't have at all like what's the difference like what is the mechanism for severe pms yeah so for severe pms which can go all the way into pmdd when you're having depression it's usually simply inflammation and that inflammation can interfere with your hormone feedback and so like you know like the estrogen and progesterone that's produced by the ovaries it communicates up to your brain and so when you have a lot of inflammation interfering with it then it gets in the way of all of your body trying to communicate and so really a lot of the diseases come down to inflammation, mm -hmm. right? That and seems the gut like and simple. inflammation is, yeah. well, that's pretty much it. Mm -hmm. Okay, do you have anything else to add? No, I would love to see anybody come through. It's really simple to help heal PMS. It's usually just one to two treatments for most of my patients. So come through Lifestyle Physicians on Tuesdays. And um, you can find me on the website now, which is really exciting. And I'll see you all next Tuesday. Yeah, and um, we will be uh, next week, I think, yeah, next week we'll be talking about uh, women's fertility. Mm -hmm. um, so if you are interested, I think we should do it at around 3 o'clock, okay. um, 3 p.m. We'll be talking about fertility. And if you have any questions about PCOS, PMS, you can let us know. Uh, I hope you all have a good day. Thank you for all who are watching, and we'll also post it so you can see it later. Thank you. Bye-bye.